Hi there, and welcome to uh, well, the Stalking Show. I'm here with Mark Ripley, who's representing Shooting and Country TV, and I'm here for Rifle Shooter. Um, we'll be doing the stands, the stalls, talking to everybody that's of interest, and uh, looking at all the latest gear. Having a good look round, yeah, it's good. It's quite a good turnout, so we have a wonder. Hi there, we're here live at the Stalking Show and I'm on the Field and Moor stand and we're going to have a look at some new boots in the range. Hi Paul, Hi. Um, since the last time I've seen you we've brought a new product in, uh, Marsh Harrier. It's uh, slightly shorter than the, uh, the traditional one that yeah, everyone yeah. liked. Um, it's got a half bellows tongue. It's still in the same family so it's got the lovely gun rest. Yeah, so you've still got that. Um, and I think that the key thing here with this type of product is that uh, with the ski hooks, your foot actually sits further back within the boot, so you're less likely to come out of the boot. And so it, it's probably better suited to upland areas as opposed to the, uh, the, the Osprey, which we have. And you've added different colours into the range as well. Yeah, we've, uh, particularly in the ladies, we've added this new teal uh, green colour in. Um, the best-selling colour is the lighter tan, yeah, we, which does well in all the seasons. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. um, and that, that, that one's leather lined, so people are actually able to wear it in a very hot climate, yeah. which is unusual for a boot. Um, and then we're doing the, the, the teal green, which adds that fashion flavour. So most of the customers have bought that, have actually gone for this colour as well. Yeah. And what's the sort of RRP range roughly? In well, the, the, the normal the normal price range is 300, but at the show yeah. and, and online at the moment, we we've got uh, between 100 and 120 pound off. Right. So people will be able to have a very good look at those. They're made as you can feel the quality of the leather. Um, although it's a very thick leather, it, it's actually made with very good quality leather. But it's very very soft. That's brilliant. Well, thank you very much. See you again. Cheers. Thanks. Hi there, and welcome to the Harkiva stand. And uh, Tom here is going to show me the latest in after hours instant camo. Excellent. So, this is the Deer Stalker cover camo jacket. And what, what I really like about it is you leave work like this Friday, you yeah. think I'm going to go and sit in the high seat. You don't want to put on your big wings coat. Literally grab this, it's quite thin, lightweight, I'm going to figure out how to do it. Literally, on it goes, there we go, like this, very lightweight, so you're not going to get hot in it. Instantly invisible. In yeah, wait for it. Okay. Faded into nothing. You've, you've vanished. Gone. You've gone. Yeah. Well, you've got, and uh, trousers to match? Yeah, there are trousers to match. It's really, really nice and lightweight, so you're not going to get hot in it. Sleeves up if you want to. Yeah. It gets muddy, gets dirty, gets bloody, straight in the washing machine. It's great. And prices, roughly there and thereabouts. 100 ish for the yeah. top, 100 ish for the bottom. Yeah. That kind of area. Yeah. So, not going to break good. the bank either. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. Nice to meet you. Okay, so we're on the ceiling stand now with Harry, and he's just going to run us through the veil um, outfit. Hi there, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Harry and I've been trying out Sealand's newest Avail uh, camo range. This is a basically a sort of lightweight stalking suit. Uh, it's kind of branded as a, a shell over, you know, sort of under layers. So the idea is that you layer this up and this is the sort of top layer. Um, it's made of a similar sort of to Gore-Tex fabric called C-Tex. Um, so it lets moisture out but does not let the water in. Um, it's a sort of simple um, and good value uh, stalking set. It doesn't have any, you know, ridiculous sort of unnecessary features and things. It's got exactly all you need and they've spent all the money on the material, which, you know, is really, really good stuff. I've been using this, this is quite new, so I've had this for about a couple of weeks. And I've been using the other Avail suit, which has been out for about a year. Um, for, yeah, like I say, about a year, 18 months, um, doing lots of deer stalking, and it's held up really, really well. In the winter, you can layer underneath it with um, sort of gilets or fleeces, or if you've got a, a Sealand heat gilet, then um, that keeps you nice and toasty. Or in the summer, you can just wear it over a shirt, um, and, you know, you don't get too hot when you're sort of out, out stalking for, for deer or, or foxing or, uh, or anything. So, uh, yeah. What sort of price range would it have? Uh, I think it's £100 for the jacket and £100 for the trousers. So I think it's about 200 quid all in. Yeah. Um, 
prices, I mean, check, check the website for upstate pricing. Um, but I think it's something in that. Good right. on there as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the Sealand Avail stalking suit. I believe we're good. giving away one of these suits on the uh, Shooting Country TV stand as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Not at all. Uh, here on the Infrae stand, having a look at some of their new products. So, uh, just tell us a little bit about this new product. Yeah, cool. So, this is the new scope which we've literally brought to market. So, this is the TH50. It's basically an R, it's the Rico 50 on steroids. It's a thermal scope. So, it's a thermal scope, and the good thing is with this, it's got the big 2560 by 2560 OLED screen, which means that you've got the big full screen in there as well, not like the traditional uh, thermals. The idea behind that is as you take your head away with a lot of scopes, you're going to find you get that thermal blindness. So they've designed it that you're not going to get that so much with this one as well. So really, really good. It's got the big sensor in there as well. So yeah, really, really so, happy. So kind of similar to the TL35 in uh, basic like battery, and so you've got an inbuilt battery. Yeah. And so you can just add um, the, the external. So yeah. the 18500. 18, yeah. yeah. So the 18500 slots straight into there to give you the additional time on there as well. So yeah. Yeah. front focus, like a normal day scope. Yeah. All the main controls in the eyepiece. Yeah. yeah. So a similar sort of setup. Just a uh, just an overall better kind of scope. Yeah. Yeah. Really excited with this one, excited to get it out to you as well for some tests. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll wait, I'll wait out play. Yeah. Yeah, no, it looks really good. Super. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, Always good to see you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Hi there, we are on the Pulsar stand and we've got the new all singing, all dancing LRF Pulsar. Um, close to £5,000 retail. It's a hell of a bit of kit. We've got a full review in the May issue of Rifle Shooter. And uh, the famous, the infamous TJ Tom is going to tell us all about it. So, yeah, as uh, Sweet said, this is the Thermal LRF. It's brand new, it's been in the country for about four weeks, four to five weeks. Obviously, the press have had it sooner. Like yourself, you had a play about with yep. it. Um, main features on this is you've obviously got the built in laser rangefinder on the top. Focusing, whether you're left handed or right handed, there's no difficulty there. Same as all the other Thermians, same body, battery sits in the top. You've got a longer run time internally, so combined you should get about roughly 10 hours. It now runs off USB C instead of micro USB C, so fast charge time. Um, but the main importance is the sensor. So they just again up upgraded the sensor on these. And then move the button, button array around for the yes. fermion so you've got the, the ping right yes. by your arm. Yeah, so your, your power button's moved up the front there. So that's standby and full power. Yeah, it's the same as everything else. And then your laser rangefinder button is on the back. Thing. Yeah. Well, and repeat thing as well, you can kind of. Yes. Yeah, um, so you can have it so it'll just literally give you a distance or you can put it in the scan mode so it will keep updating you. But if you put the range from the run, what we found is um, a massive benefit is it bring picture and picture up. So yeah. you'll still have your crosshair. Yeah, so you can use you can accurate just, yeah. Bring yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Brilliant. All right, so we'll look at the next one. Uh, we're still here on the Pulsar stand and we've got the all new. Talion, and I know that is correct. Yeah, Talion. Yeah, Talion. I know absolutely nothing about it. I'm assuming it's a 384 sensor film. Yes, that particular one is. So in the Talion series, you're going to have two sensors. Right. You have the XQ38, mm -hmm. and then you're going to, there will be later on in the year the XG38, which is a 640 sensor. Right. Same lens size. Same lens size. Yeah. Same physical design and everything, but internally sharp, sharp sensor. I mean, I like the fact that they're not trying to pretend yeah. it's a day scale. I think it's, it's, so it's, it kind of is what it is, and which, is, which is fine. And obviously, it'll shoot with the reach back mount. Standard. Yes, so they, they've changed the mount on these, so it's gone to a prism mount. Right. So it's still Weaver Picatinny, but the, the main uh, mounting system underneath has gone to prism, so you can actually move it. Right, so multiple 
three points. Yeah. Again, the right, correct time really. And then yeah, a few other features. So we've got like what I call sharp fin focus. So it's just like that. Yeah. 70 yards it's focused for when it's smack bang in the middle. So if right, you know so if you see something <laughs> and it's in focus and you know that's set there, which is roughly about 70 yards. Yeah. You've got your power button. You've got all your buttons on the back here, standard. And all the AV stuff. Yeah, still. Same, same pulsar platform as a menu system you go through it. It's familiar. The same as all your handouts, quantum drive mounted. On board mic as well on that one? Yes. Right. Um, battery system is in, in here. So you unlock it, you lift it up, right. and your APS 5 comes out. Like so. So you get a decent run time out of these more larger ones. Yeah. Yeah. Or you think sort of 8 10 hours? A bit less? A bit less, probably about 6 or 7 hours. Right, okay. Well, um, not probably to get in your pocket. Yeah, spare, yeah. yeah. and spares you're talking Under. about 40 pounds, so it's not nothing scary. Um, and the RRP on this? RRP is just over 2000. Right. And so when it's not going to sort of and that's scare anyone. It's going to be in the shop now or about to? In the, yeah, about to. Probably in the next month. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, looking forward to that one. There will be a full review in Rifle Shooter, probably in the. Well, depends when I get hold of one. Probably June issue, maybe maybe July. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled and uh, pick up the map. Yes, Tom. Thank you. I'm on the Highland Outdoor stand, and we've got some new stocky stocks to have a look at. And here's the man to explain exactly what you can get and what you can do with them. Absolutely new to us, very recent acquisition, um, a new offering: carbon fibre stocks. Um, these are available in a, a range of, of your, your common footprints, really. Remy 700, uh, T3, all power combinations. Um, starting from £650. A um, couple of little variations, so we've got that. Incredibly light. Insanely light. Incredibly light. Yeah. We've had a few of them nearly go through the ceiling when people have picked them up. Um, a, more, a more sort of stalking traditional cut there. And then a slight price increase of about 670 um, sponge finish or this one which has got a lovely and are these, finish on them. Are they all carbons or some polymers? Is it yeah, no, these are all carbon. Right, so okay. despite the uh, paint on them. Yeah. 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 Despite nice. any paintwork or anything like that, they are all a carbon construction. So they are yeah. insanely light, they really are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, fantastic. I think they should shave a few pounds for every trifle really. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a few little options as well. So we've got some that have got studs, yeah. um, and then we've got some to take them lock. Right. Um, okay. So yeah, a few, few little ranges, something to suit everybody there, and uh, yeah, saves lugging any extra weight up the hill. Brilliant. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you very much. And here we are. We're still on the Highland Outdoor stand, and we're going to take a look at the uh, MDT stocks, and these are well, really quite cool, quite fancy combinations of aluminium and carbon. Magnesium. Magnesium. Um, yeah. So, you know, whilst you're on carbon fibre, you may as well go lightweight on the woodwork, on yeah, the yeah. steel as well. It's magnesium now. Um, AR standard grips, it's the HNT26 by MDT. Um, just out and out, as light as it can be. So, as I said, magnesium construction there, carbon fibre at front and back, an adjustable cheek piece. This one's the fixed stock, which is the lightest one you can get. Yeah, and this and one then we've got the uh, push button variant. Yeah, folding stock as well, which is always always nice. They'll take any AR platform grip. Um, yeah. That's just simply changeable, but once you've got carbon, are you ever going to change that? Yeah. And the barrel action, you've got a, a choice of? Or? Yeah, yeah, so these will fit any of the uh, T3 T footprints, right. um, and also Remy 700 and variants thereof. Um, so yeah, you can, you know, you've got a fair old option. That's really cool. Arc nice. four ends, swivel studs, yeah. um, quick release adapters, and M lock. So really, the RRP on these is there thereabouts. In the folding, I think they start at fourteen hundred, and in the fixed, they start about twelve hundred. Uh, expensive. But expensive by the kilo, but yeah, you know, yeah, very yeah. reasonable for what you're getting. Um, you know, okay. There's not many stocks you can wave around. No, not really. Like that. Well, let's get the cameraman with. <laughs> That's it, thank you very much. Okay, so I'm here with Harvey, the Tom's Target Stand. So Harvey, just run us through the 
through some of the latest products that you've got. So some of the most exciting products that we've got coming out now is we did a lot of R&D feedback on what customers liked about the targets, what they didn't like about the targets. Most common feedback was that they kept blowing the shackles off the stand. The shackles were made of mild steel, so obviously if you hit that with a bullet, it was disintegrating. So we've got the Pro Range stand down here. Uh, this stand is compatible with all of our new range of guns. The target that we've got out at the minute, this is the COVID target. Uh, it's a fully hard ox, hard ox stand, so any part of it that you hit is going to be completely bulletproof. What's that, 10 mil, yeah? Yeah, this is the 10 mil Hardox 500 steel. So, and quick, easy to put together, cool, yeah. takes apart, it's flat pack, goes in the car. So that's been something that we've been working on for a long time now, and we're, we're really pleased with the outcome. I see you've got some like, pretty heavy duty shackles on there, that's a good idea. They are pretty heavy that's duty. Really cool, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's still one of those things, if you, if you hit dead on here with the yeah, 270 or the 306, it's, it's something that a lot of people look to do. <laughs> I've got one of the, um, the Fox Targets like that one there, I've got a load of those actually. And what I like about them is the fact that you've got that cross section. Yes. It's so much easier to walk out and feel the down there. Absolutely. Long it's and you're, you're up and up. And up that's it. the main thing that we've been pushing for in all of our R&D, whenever we're developing something new, we're just trying to make it simple, easy, and as less like cumbersome to put together. If you yeah. can get it so it can fit in a rucksack and it can be hiked out, that's what we're aiming for. Um, I know it's also you. Um, you make some. Or you do the. Uh, like people come to you with the design. Yeah. yeah so the custom orders. Yeah. Because yeah, I've had a couple of folks start with you. Yeah. And like a couple of sitting boxes. And we've been asked to do. Really quite, cool. We've been asked to do some funny and weird designs over the years. I what's, think the, what's the worst one you've had? Silhouette of somebody's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do a Putin type? Like we, we could do. We could do. <laughs> yeah, there's no idea. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Thank Harvey. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm here with Nigel on the Ridgeline stand, and uh, we're just going to have a look at a new range of uh, clothing here. Maybe just give us a quick run through. Okay, so this year we're um, expanding on the hybrid gear that we bought in last year. But basically the hybrid gear is a mix of soft shell and also fleece. And the reason why we use a soft shell is because it's hard wearing, it's also windproof and water resistant. So therefore the upper half of your body is the most important part to keep warm and dry. Yeah. So we're using that as a shield against the weather. But we're using the fleece because the fleece obviously has got warming properties, but it's also it's, it's stretchy and it'll move with you as well. So first at this end of the hybrid vest. So on top of the hybrid vest got the um, um, soft shell and if you're going to be carrying a deer or carrying uh, anything in the field then that's going to be protected because of abrasiveness or the abrasive ability and then you've also got loads of pockets on it so if you want to lose yeah. your glasses then you can uh, put them in any one yeah, of your pockets. Nice, that's a nice, uh, nice jacket huh? Nice high colour, yeah. it stops the wind as well. Yeah. And then you've similar, uh, along the similar line we've got what we call the bandit busher Again, abandoned bush shirts, hybrid, comes sleeve, um, and then, wood, but this time with a hood. So you've got the hood with a pink to protect yourself. Fleece line makes it nice and warm. And then on top there, you've got the um, protective of the soft shell. And then it's a loose fitting garment, so you've got the action cuts on the side. So when you're moving up and down the hills, you know, it's not going to restrict your movement as well. Yeah, so it's quite similar to the smog you I've got That's on there. Really and it's, yeah, very comfortable. So it keeps the wind out as well. Yeah, really that's good right. But I mean, different types of olive. So you see two different types of olive there: field olive, and then our general um, right, yeah. olive that we 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 yeah. yeah. And then with the girls, we've got a similar uh, type of garment as well. So this is again an evolution of the hybrid, and um, exactly the same as what I said before, with the soft shell on the top. Um, but this time you've got a windproof fleece, so it keeps the wind off. And quiet too, by and quiet, it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also loads of pockets and then the way to the girls draw that in to keep the, the wall yeah. in the top half of the body. So what are we looking for price price Everything's under a hundred pounds, so this is ninety nine. Wow. You've got the uh, men's bandit bush shirt, that's eighty nine ninety nine. And then for the hybrid fleece vest, that is forty four ninety nine. So all the yeah, reasons. That is good price, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, that's about it from the uh, stalking show. I hope you've enjoyed the little tour you've had today. Um, I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more on the Shooting the Country TV, and you'll obviously be all the products we've been looking at today will be appearing in Rifle Shooter. Um, it's a great trip, really enjoyed it, it was a good show, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all again. <laughs>